What's going on everybody, C4 here and welcome to the newest episode of the Realistic Rebuilds. Today we are doing the LA Chargers and I'm not going to lie, this is the first rebuild in quite a long time that I have no idea what the plan is going into it. One, because clearly they have an aging quarterback and usually I have an idea of maybe what I'm going to do with that quarterback spot. No idea. Secondly, they are a really, really good team who in real life are the exact opposite of what they are in Madden. In real life, everyone pretty much knows that when the Chargers make the playoffs, they're going to fail for whatever reason. Like this year, this was the year that Phillip Rivers was playing like an MVP quarterback. You were all somewhat relatively healthy because it's a team that, for whatever reason, has struggled with injuries. And they still just got embarrassed by the New England Patriots. But in the Madden world, the Chargers are like Super Bowl favorites every single year. So I, I'm not expecting this to be a a super difficult rebuild. I, I'm actually kind of hoping that we win a couple Super Bowls, judging what we know about the Chargers in the sim. But you never know. So that being said, we're pretty much just going to take it as is and, and find out just what we're going to do with this rebuild as we go along. Looking at the roster, we obviously got Phillip Rivers at 36 years old as our quarterback. Um... I don't know, we're probably going to get two years out of him, two out of the five years of the rebuild, but hey, I'll take it. At running back, we have our franchise running back in Melvin Gordon. We have a very good RB2 in Austin Eckler, who, for all intents and purposes for right now, we'll, get, we'll throw him up on the trade block and just see what we can get, because I do like two running backs in my scheme, depending on, I don't know yet how this Chargers offense is going to work in the sim, but sometimes two running backs are good. But in terms of contracts, there's going to be no way where they're going to pay both these guys. So we can get good value right now for Eckler. We might have to take it because I think Justin Jackson is a pretty viable RB2. Looking at the wide receivers, we got a Keenan Allen. We got Tyrell Williams. We got Mike Williams, who's emerging. We got Travis Benjamin, who at 2880. We're actually going to throw him up on the trade block as well. But we have our wide receiving core. We hope for the remainder of the rebuild. Hunter Henry at tight end is an absolute stud. Uh, obviously, the legend Antonio Gates still kicking around. We're not going to get on from him. We're going to keep him on. Just respect the legend. Offensive lines, all right. We got Dan Feeney at guard. Mike Pouncey's a little bit old. Um, what I did, actually, was I took Forrest Lamp, who, who kind of was a guard tackle hybrid when he was coming out of Western Kentucky. I'm going to play him at right tackle. I think he's a quick dev trait. So, I mean, look at our offensive line. We have, I mean, maybe if Dan Feeney can keep on, we have two. Two offensive linemen set. The rest, that's a position that we're going to have to try and get better at. Defensive line, we got Joey Bosa, who's a freak of nature. He's been, the last couple years, one of the best edge rushers in Madden. We got Melvin Ingram, who's still really, really nice, but obviously at 29. Got to be conscientious about that age and how well it's going to hold up for the five-year rebuild. We probably are going to get two years or so out of him before he starts to regress pretty bad. In the interior, Corey Luge. I'm always going to call him that. Um, 28, 83, that's not bad. He should be all right for the time being. They invested uh, a decent draft pick in Justin Jones at NC State. But he is a 72 with a normal, so we might have to look at a D-tackle. Let's file on here. Yeah. And uh, actually, still, you know, still what? You know, not to, not to get super emotional, but definitely still shouts out to Brandon Mabain. Uh, if you heard what happened with him and his daughter during the playoff game, uh, or the playoff run, and they obviously came back to play against the Patriots. Uh, it's heartbreaking as a parent myself. Um, so because of that, you know what? Because of that, we're not going to get rid of him because that's a pretty ugly contract. But we're going to keep him for the remainder of his deal. Uh, an outside linebacker, we got Cheno Wosu from USC. And he's been very, very good. 22-77 overall with a quick dev. So that is a franchise player for us. In the interior, we got Denzel Perryman, who I was a huge fan of coming out of the U. Hasn't really, you know, I don't, I don't even really think it's been his play. It's just he's been struggling to stay healthy. But 74 quick, we, we might be able to develop him. I like that dev trait. And then at the other outside, we got Jatavis Brown, 79 with a quick. So, I mean... A lot of people like to shit on the Chargers linebacking core. I think, at least from a Madden standpoint, we're going to be all right. We're going to be all right. Uh, in the second area, we got Casey Hayward, who is a little, you know, Madden ratings a little bit down because he had a down year in the eyes of Madden. Uh, but he still is a really, really good corner. We got Desmond Kings, one of the best slot corners in the league. We have Jason Rett, and we have Trevor Williams, a.k.a. the top guy to get every free agency period. What I'm going to do is I'm going to throw Jason Rett, again, another player that has just struggled to stay healthy. We're going to throw him up on the trade block and see what kind of value he can get because I, I firmly believe Williams, King, and Hayward can be our long-term corners. Uh, here's another thing that I did. Uh, at strong safety, you have Derwin James, freak of nature. A lot of people already call him Sean Taylor 2.0, but his backup was Adrian Phillips. And I was like, you know what? Adrian Phillips can be our starter, I think. Like this, that's a good safety tandem. They're both at the right side of of 25, we'll say, because obviously 26 is good for the rebuild. But we have a, a die here who's actually a pretty decent safety, 79 quick. So we're also going to throw him up on the trade block. I think with that dev trade, we should get a couple nibblers. Uh, we have Michael Bagley, who looks like he has a mullet in his picture, which is awesome from the U. 
Uh, he should be fine for a long-term kicker. And then we got Bag of Bones, the most gangster punter in the NFL, Donnie Jones. Uh, I'm glad that uh, he came out of retirement. And get another playoff run out of it. So, a couple trades we have to wait and see. But there is, for the most part, this is a very young roster. So, once we figure out the offensive line and what we're going to do at quarterback, I don't think there's anything stopping this Chargers team from finally winning a Super Bowl. Let's get into it. All right, look at the trade offers for Jason Verrett. We did get a first-round pick in a deal from the Packers. But even me, knowing the upside of Verrett with the injuries and stuff, he's probably not going to fetch a first. But any of these deals involving a second-round pick, I feel like that's probably what we should be looking at. Uh, and because for this draft, again, I have yet to complete my 2020 draft class. Um, so that means the 2020 draft class, at least for this rebuild, it's going to be those, those juicy madden generated players not my somewhat more difficult draft class i'm gonna be looking for a 2020 for, uh, the, the best 2020s that we could get and it looks like the atlanta falcons a second fifth and a seventh is what we're gonna be looking at taking so there we go sending them off to atlanta and then we send travis benjamin and a fourth round pick to the buffalo bills for a third rounder and then we were finally able to get a very generous offer from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers for Jalil Adai. This is like week four of the regular season, but we got a 2020 second round pick for the quick dev free safety. All right, so here we are at the, about the midway point of year number one, and we're sitting with a four and three record, which, I mean, looks like with the Chiefs being seven and oh, we're going to be playing for that wild card berth, but we're still well within the hunt. Looking at players that we got to talk about resigning, Tyrell Williams and Trevor Williams both. We definitely want to look at bringing back Tyrell Williams, 85 quick dev. That's an affordable deal, 40 mil. We got almost 15 mil for an 82 quick. How does that guy always hit free agency? If you have an 82, 24-year-old quick dev corner that wants less than $15 million for three years, offer him the money. Uh, Adrian Phillips, another one. So, uh, quick dev free safety, the man that we kind of moved on from a die. We'll, we'll definitely have to work out a little bit longer of a deal. I uh, definitely want to keep bringing Bet Denzel Perriman back. We got him. Bagley's been a pretty good kicker. We'll see if we can get him back. Nice. So, uh, yeah, pretty much just need to come back with Adrian Phillips, and then we got everyone that we wanted. And at the end of year number one, a failed season you would have to view as we came 9-7. and seven. Second in the West, the Chiefs, who started 7-0, finished 11-5, so we did have a chance. Where did we finish? I mean, at least, hey, we're second team out, and at least we didn't get knocked out from the Patriots, who had that tie differential. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I can just tell from going through the Sim, we won in the Sim the games that I thought we would struggle against. Like, we had, like, for example, we'd lose to the 3-9 the and nine, Cardinals, but then we'd beat the nine and whatever Steelers. So it was just one of those years where the Madden Sim was definitely a little wonky. Looking at our player stats, great year for Phillip Rivers. 40, we'll round that up to 4,700 passing yards, 35 touchdowns, 11 picks. Again, hopefully he doesn't retire because he's still playing at a very high level. We get 1,100 yards, five touchdowns from Gordon. Not much yards, but nine TDs from Eckler, providing his worth, showing his worth. Uh, receiving Keaton Allen, huge year, 96 catches, 1,300 yards, 8 TDs. Tyrell Williams, 806, 1,112 from Mike Williams, 730 and 3 from Hunter Henry. And Melvin Gordon got involved out the backfield. Defensively, Jatavis Brown, 133 tackles. Perryman, 128 with 10 TFLs. I'll take that. Nine sacks from Ingram. Bosa, oof. We need to, I need to see better numbers. They're off the edge. Come on. Definitely better numbers. Uh, interceptions, not bad, again, for how good our secondary is. Might have would have expected a little bit more. But, um, yeah, sacks for sure. Biggest disappointment on the season for us. MVP went to Todd Gurley. Phil Rivers coming in at number eight in the AFC Offense Player of the Year. Went to Lamar Jackson, beating out our boy Phillip Rivers. But, I mean, you know, I think if Phillip Rivers comes second in Offensive Player of the Year, he's just going to say, all right, that's enough motivation to just bang out another kid. Defensive Player of the Year went to Miles Garrett. We had Denzel Perryman, our two linebackers, Perryman and Brown, coming in at 9 and 10. Offensive Rookie of the Year went to Lamar Jackson. We had no one. Defensive Rookie of the Year went to Minka Fitzpatrick. Man, where's our boy, Den our, uh, Derwin James? Down there at 9 with his superstar dev trait already up to a 95 overall. And I don't think he lost it. I actually think he still has that superstar dev trait, which means he's for sure. There we go. He's going to be a 99 next year. Looking at this team, what players are going to get their gold gloves? I think Derwin James will get it. Does Joey Bosa have a superstar? Joey Bosa will get it. 
I think that uh, Des King might get it, even though, th did he lose a dev trade? No, he's, he's just been staying at a st at quick. I think Des King, I think we have three 99 candidates on the defensive side. On the offensive side, you never know. With Hunter Henry, Melvin Gordon, Keenan Allen, we might get something special there. But that being said, still a failed year, and knowing that the Chargers made the playoffs in real life makes you feel extra terrible about yourself. But uh, let's get into the offseason, and hopefully it's a good one. Screw it, we're doing it. We haven't used him yet. We have no real holes on the team. So with our pick, we are going to select Daniel Jones, the quick dev quarterback from Duke, to be the potential successor for Mr. Phillip Rivers. All right, so here's a look at our draft recap. In the first round, we got Daniel Jones, the quarterback from Duke, an absolute luxury pick here for the Chargers because we had no real holes. And now is as good as time as ever to get a quarterback that can learn behind Phillip Rivers. Now, the only thing is going to be gambling about that dev trait. Uh, if he's our backup, for whatever reason, man, backups with their dev traits are kind of weird. Uh, sometimes they lose them, sometimes they don't, when I've been told time and time again that you lose them if you don't finish in like an X amount of percentage of stats, but that's not always the case for some reason, so, uh, we'll have to keep an eye on that, maybe we'll have to throw him to the Wolves sooner than later just for thinking about the long-term ability of this rebuild. We got Isaiah Prince in the second round, 73 quick dev tackle from Ohio State. Uh, Going to, you know, pretty much be back up at left tackle, I think, to Russell Okun. Third round, look at these defensive ends just sitting there. Jalen Jelk, 73 star from Oregon. You know, Melvin Ingram's not getting any younger. We got Zach Allen here, 73 quick from Boston College. A massive slip. Guy's a guy that most people think first, second round talent still sitting there in the third. Um, and then we just get, you know, a couple depth guys. And then we finish up with a new starting punter, Mitch Wisnowski, the punter from Utah. 73 overall. So a really, really solid draft for us. And ultimately, here we go. Daniel Jones. Looks very much like Daniel Jones, I bet. All right, so here we go in 2019, year two of the rebuild. Uh, obviously, offensive line, not a lot has changed. We actually took Isaiah Prince, and we're going to have him start at right guard just so we hopefully can maintain that quick dev. Uh, we're going to play it cautious, short leash for Phillip Rivers. Played very, very well last year, but I'm going to say at about week eight to ten in that rate. How about probably when we meet up at the midway point to talk about contracts? If we don't have a winning record, I mean, we gotta we gotta make the decision for the long term stability of this franchise here. That if Daniel Jones loses his quick death and Philip Rivers retires, like I think he's probably gonna at the end of this year. Um, I mean, we're just setting ourselves back almost a full year by losing that dev trade for Jones. So we'll have to we'll have to keep an eye on that. On the defensive side, what we did is actually we took Zach Allen and we moved him into D tackle. I mean, some people do project him to be a defensive tackle, a four three D tackle when he moves. I just feel like with that dev trait, 72 quick, we'll see what he can do there, along with Luger. Um, That's pretty much it in terms of changes. Uh, specialists remain a pretty much about the same. Um, so, yeah, man, let's go. Let's go. Big news will be Philip Rivers is playing for his job. So coming out of the bye, we're 5-2, and two, which means Philip Rivers has played well enough to get his job. Uh, we already got one skill point with Daniel Jones. I think he's pretty close to that. Like one more week to getting a second one. So I will absolutely take that as our team is first in the AFC West. Uh, I'll take that. I will definitely take that every day of the week. So we'll get some contract extensions. Oh, boy, oh, boy, this is going to be expensive. That's why we didn't spend any money in free agency last year. Joey Bosa, Melvin Ingram, Hunter Henry. It's going to be a sad day. It's going to be a sad day that we're going to have to go with Daniel Jones. This is going to be Philip Rivers' last ride. I think, I, you know what? I honestly feel like there's something in the pit of my stomach that says Charger fans are like, are ready for that next year because for whatever I don't know I'm not I'm not ready to say Mr. Awkward throwing motion is the uh, is the reason why the Chargers have continued to falter in the playoffs but I just think they need something new they need something different to see you know what else can happen here we'll we'll come back here with Javis Brown there's no way in hell we're gonna be able to pay 30 million dollars there's no way in hell we're gonna have you know almost 70 million dollars locked into our running backs so that's just that's just not gonna happen. Um, so yeah, all right, Philip Rivers, this is your last year, baby. You want to win a Super Bowl title with the Chargers? Go out on top. So just to show you that we're not going crazy in Week 15, we did go with Daniel Jones. We we're sitting at, I think we were seven and or no, we were like six and six or something crazy like that, or six and five. Not where we wanted to be. We've gone with Daniel Jones, who's three and two in a starter. Had a big win his first start against the New England Patriots. And then in week 15, 37 to 14, down the clutch. We need these victories to try to get into the playoffs. 
And at 37-14, four touchdowns against a very playoff caliber team in the Tennessee Titans. So a new era has begun here in San Diego. Wherever this team is located at this particular moment, Daniel Jones is the starter. At the end of the year, before you find out we make the playoffs or not, Derwin James, in just year two of his career, has already got himself, you know what, it's it's the ceremony that all players, I'm sure countless NFL players watch my rebuilds and they're like, just give me a year. Give me a year or two, and he's going to be giving me the, the, the most illustrious award that one could hand a player in the equipment modifying section. Of this, and that is the 99 gear. Where's the 99 gear? There you go. Congrats, Derwin James. I assume your buddy Joey Bosa is going to be here soon, but in two years, man, safeties just develop insane if you have a superstar dev in my sliders. Thanks to the horrible, horrible regression here in Madden 19's franchise mode. So, that being said, with the gold gloves, we made the playoffs with Daniel Jones at quarterback for the final six games i don't know if it'll tell us in the stats we went 10 and 6 we won the afc west it took all it took was a daniel jones to get in here um i'm gonna say daniel jones i wish we would well, say if we look at his stats like more in depth how many games he played i want to do that is it is somewhere in here come on tell me tell me how many games oh there we go one two three four five six seven eight nine ten one what the hell this must go inverse, right? This goes inverse. So Daniel Jones played one, two, three, four, five, six, seven games. That makes sense because some of the, all these other ones are just like your one throws. So in seven games, he went 17 touchdowns and four. I, I admit, if he started, he would probably win. He'd probably have a better depth trade right now than the quick that he has right there. Uh, run the ball. We ran it pretty efficiently with Melvin Gordon and Austin Eckler receiving. A huge year for Mike Williams. He's been a sim god for us. 1,100 yards, 14 touchdowns. Pretty good production from everybody else. On the defensive side, Jatavis Brown and Denzel Perryman just being bosses in the middle of the field. Joey Bosa, 17 TFLs, 9 sacks. Acceptable. Zach Allen, kind of playing that NASCAR role. Very similar to love what might maybe say Michael Bennett does with the Philadelphia Eagles. Slightly undersized D tackle. That's great production there. Three picks, Derwin James. Definitely want more picks from our secondary. Our secondary is very, very good. Unless we get a bunch of namdy asthma or Pat Peterson's back there that, oh, their stats don't show up. I want to see a little bit better. Uh, AFC Offensive Player of the Year went to Marcus Mariota. We had nobody. Despectful. AFC Defensive Player of the Year went to Miles Jack, which is Tavis Brown coming in at number three. Offensive Rookie of the Year went to Dwayne Haskins. Daniel Jones in playing less than half a year come in at number two, which would have been... Who knows? Who knows what would have happened if we would have started him? Devin White got Defensive Player of the Year. Zach Allen coming in at number six. So we had great production from our rookies and the new era in L.A. with Daniel Jones. Looks good, as I firmly believe if we stuck with Phillip Rivers, at best, we would have had to play in this wild card round. That's if we did make the playoffs. At worst, we wouldn't even be here. So I feel like, you know, having the gumption. To go with Daniel Jones as our starter has us here in the divisional round hosting the 10 and 6 Pittsburgh Steelers. Let's get into the game. Let's go, Daniel Jones. There, get me one win. I, I feel like if Daniel Jones can get me one playoff win, I'm gonna be able to sleep with my decision of pretty much wasting Philip Rivers last year in the NFL. You know, I think Philip Rivers is a, is a is a he's a team player. Even though he looks like the most arrogant asshole in the National Football League, I think if if Daniel Jones could lead him, Phillip Rivers would take enough confidence in, like, I got that guy ready. So this is a high-scoring game, 28-28 as we get into the fourth quarter. Whatever team can seemingly play defense is going to win. I would hope it'd be our defense that's full of high 90 overall players. And, uh, oh, we got a chance. And, uh, you know what? We're coming in. We're coming in. We're dusting off. We're dusting off the pads. We got our mouth guard in. I have not played Madden in quite a while it's probably been like three days two three days since i did the replacements video oh boy all right let's go daniel jones this is on it's on default sliders but look this guy got wheels there we go he got wheels this is on default sliders though it's my fault usually i use my mat 10 sliders for my rebuilds to try to make my life not a living hell but i did not figure at this point usually i just flick those on for the fifth year because usually we don't play but I'm not going to have the sim ruin all our fun here today. There we go. 
All right, not good. Oh, beauty. An absolute beauty. Why is that guy so slow? I don't know, but that is a bomb. Daniel Jones threw almost 350 yards, three touchdowns, and a pick in his debut playoff performance. Can't hate it. Now we're getting to this point. We're at about a minute. Just take it under a minute. If we can get a score, is it going to be just enough time for Pittsburgh to go all the way down the field without using any of their timeouts? Oh, my God. Beautiful ball. Here we go. We're going to find out. But Mike Williams, I think that is going to be the combination. It was Phillip Rivers and Antonio Gates, and then to a lesser extent, Keenan Allen. I think Daniel Jones and Mike Williams are going to become that guy. So 45 seconds left. Pittsburgh have all three timeouts. What's, what's the odds that they go down the field and score? Pretty high. Oh, it goes to OT. And we get a stop. And we kick the field goal. And then they get the instant touchdown. I swear to God, I hate this game so much. After trading two field goals, they get the instant touchdown to win in overtime. I'm not overly frustrated because that is a monster game from Daniel Jones. I think we know what we have now in a potential franchise quarterback. And I'm not... I don't know. I don't know. I'm not super salty about this one because, I mean, if there's any team that could plausibly score an instant touchdown, it would be an offense of the Pittsburgh Steelers caliber, but still uh, it's still kind of frustrating. But it is the Sim. It's what happens when you play with the Sim. So uh, until hopefully Madden 20, until they make C4 a game changer and I can make sure that they just tweak 100% something they can tweak in the scripting in the Sim, uh, we're probably just got to deal with this. So let's uh, let's get into the offseason and get into year number three. We have a bunch of draft picks you got to remember for this upcoming draft as well. So here's a look at our draft recap. As I said, we have I haven't had enough time yet to finish and re-update my 2020 draft class. So anytime there's a good player, we'll just modify them. Um, so what we did in the first, we went all heavy on the offensive line, as that's you know it's a it, one of these drafts we had to go all in on the O line. And as soon as we start having to deal with some of the uh, Madden-generated picks, it's really easy for a draft god like myself to take a part of the draft and uh, exploit the offensive line, which is kind of easy. So in the first round of pick 27, we got Shane Lemieux, the guard from Oregon, 78 quick uh, with great size. Could bring some tackle flexibility, but for right now, he is going to be our starting right guard. Um, just more of a flex guy, we got Aaron Goldberg here, 76 normal from Penn. And look at this, slipping a little bit. Tyler Bidash, the center from Wisconsin, 79, star dev, 22. Now, not a scheme fit. Going to have to probably spend some points or just accept that he's never going to be a scheme fit. But a 79, star dev, right after we let Marquise Pouncey, or uh, Mike Pouncey, sorry, hit free agency. That is a great get for our team. Uh, 72, tight end here with a normal dev. I actually thought it would be way better just to back up. Hunter Henry. We got a 75 D tackle in the third round. Bradley Braxton from South Florida. 71 wide receiver Donald Warmack. But other than that, you know, then I just, I'm not going to lie, I pretty much simmed out the rest of the draft because I felt like we did our part already. But, you know, I guess you could say two off seasons in a row that we haven't made a free agency signing, but that is kind of because we know we have a lot of good young talent on this roster that we have to more so work at keeping, keeping all of our talent in-house than it is splurging on some shiny new objects. So that's a really, really good draft for this team. And uh, yeah, we got the offensive line, the Daniel Jones era, even though it kind of already started. Now it officially, he is the undisputed starter. Let's go. All right, year three, here's how our team is shaping up. We got an 86 overall, 89 offense, 89 defense, which is awesome. Daniel Jones is an 80 overall. We got Gordon 92, Keenan Allen 94, Mike Williams 91, and Tyrell Williams 87, Hunter Henry 92. That is just an elite elite skill position uh, supporting cast for Daniel Jones. The offensive line is young, but they're all on the right side at 25. And uh, I'm actually pretty sure all these guys have a dev trait. We got Quick, Dan Feeney got a Quick, centered by Dash, who we drafted in the second round, got a star. Shane Lemieux, as we saw, got a Quick. And then Forrest Lamp here at right tackle, got a Quick. So that is awesome. That's only going to grow. We, of course, we already bought the OL uh, scouting pad or whatever, the XP boost for our coach. Look at that defensive side. Um, obviously, we got Zach Allen is developing, making that transition to defensive tackle. But we got Dez King, 92. Uh, Hayward's starting to regress a little bit, but he's still going to be productive. Joey Bosa looking at getting his gold gloves this season. Our linebacking course coming along very, very nice. So this is just this is a really good team, and I expect yet again to have another opportunity here in year three to challenge for a Super Bowl. At about the midway point of year number three, we're sitting with a pretty decent 4-2 and two record. Uh, everyone seems to be performing pretty well, and we are first in the AFC West, looking to get back-to-back -back AFC West titles. 
Looking at contract negotiations, we got Keenan Allen, who's 28, Star Dev. Yep, sure thing, bud. You're coming back. Oh, you want more money? Uh, okay. You got to bend us over a little bit. That's fine. Des King's 93. The dev trait's gone, which kind of sucks, but he's still in the elite corner. Mike Williams has been an absolute baller. Got that superstar dev trait. So, absolutely. Uh, Melvin Ingram wants a three-year... That's not... Okay, we'll, we'll wait on that. Because we do have Jalen Jokes, who has that star dev. Maybe... I don't know yet. Uh, we got some of the offensive line locked up. That's, that's going to be a tough one here. I feel like we're getting younger at both of these positions that we're not going to have to spend that money. So we'll, we'll, we'll hammer our deal with Keenan Allen, and we'll figure out what we're doing with Melvin Ingram and Corey Luge. But still, they both still got those quick devs, but you know they're going to both hit that regression where probably next year Luge is going to be 79, and Melvin Ingram is going to be like 82, 83 at best. So that's a lot of money to have locked up in those veterans. Very special moment as we get to the conclusion of the regular season, Joey Bosa is officially the second player on this squad with a 99. You know what's actually surprising right now is that Mike Williams, wide receiver, kind of slow start from Clemson, struggled staying healthy, and everyone's kind of like, oh, my God, is Mike Williams ever going to be, you know, the kind of guy that we saw at Clemson, that lethal combination that we saw with Deshaun Watson? I think there's a chance. But that superstar dev, he could get 99 on the offensive side. But we get our second 99 on the defensive side to pair with Derwin James here in Mr. Joey Joseph Bosa. And at the end of year number three, look at that. A beautiful first round by second straight AFC West title. And let's look at these two big award winners. We have Zach Allen, who is developing into his own. Got himself a Pro Bowl appearance. Didn't get a dev trade upgrade, which would have been nice. But the fact that it looks like we're moving on from Corey Luge at D tackle. Zach Allen already at 80 base. That's, that's a good starting spot. And he already has a quick dev, so, I mean, it could be worse. And then our boy Daniel Jones in his first year as a full starter made the Pro Bowl, was the NFL passing rating leader, which, I mean, eh, but did get that star dev, which is going to be huge at that two confidence boost heading into the playoffs. We already saw what he did against the Pittsburgh Steelers last year in the playoffs. Even though it was a losing effort, he had like 400 yards and four touchdowns. It was the defense that fell a little bit short. So, ah, man, we got confidence at an all-time high here. Let's just quickly see him here. We'll check the stats. But let's see. As we're taking on the 9-7 and seven Bengals, which is, if you see a 9-win team in the playoffs, knowing how the sim goes in Madden 19, you should be terrified. You should be just shaking in your boots. Look at that. Our regular season stats, Daniel Jones was a straight baller, son. 4,800 yards, 37 touchdowns to 9 picks. I'll take that. We got, well, we threw the ball a little bit more than usual. That is not a great year from Melvin Gordon. Uh, receiving, we got 89 catches, 1,100 yards, almost 1,200 yards, and 8 TDs from Keenan Allen, 707 from Mike Williams, 1,310 from Tyrell Williams. So I guess whatever wide receiver is playing in the slot is kind of eaten here in this scheme. Good year from uh, Hunter Henry as well. On the defensive side, we got woof, 116 tackles, 7 sacks from Denzel Perryman, 11.5 sacks from Joey Bosa, 8 sacks, 11 TFLs from Zach Allen. I'll take that. Um, 2, 4, 6, 8 picks from... Most of our starters in the secondary. I'll take that as well. Looking at the yearly awards, MVP went to Todd Gurley with Daniel Jones coming in at number three. AFC Offensive Player of the Year went to Deshaun Watson with Daniel Jones coming in at number two. Maybe feeling a little, that's, maybe that's a little bit harsh. Defensive Player of the Year, though, went to our boy Denzel Perryman. Wonder if we get a dev trade boost. Probably didn't, knowing how our luck has been when it goes with those. Offensive Rookie of the Year, I mean, we all went offensive line, so doesn't really matter but our team is playing very very well and uh you know it's only year three so i'm not ready to just start going all or nothing and getting all the game play in but we'll go play the moments we should be able to at least go to an afc championship game but it'll be very nice for daniel jones and this young team to get at least a playoff victory under their belts let's go big dub big dub all right, we jump out to a 7 to nothing lead. Our defense is playing pretty well. They were what I ultimately think was the biggest disappointment last year when we exited the playoffs. Um, all right, uh, low scoring first half. Offense needs to step it up for sure. Let's see Daniel Jones. Come on. Come on, you're in the MVP race. There we go. Two straight touchdowns. Let's get another one. There we go. There's the second touchdown. So we're up 21-3. to three. Uh, should be freely. Look at that, man. Not a single touchdown given up from our defense. You love to see it. As Andy Dalton can't believe it. Daniel Jones, very just professional. 250 yards, two touchdowns. 
100 yards on the day from Melvin Gordon, but definitely shout out to our defense as we are now heading towards the AFC Championship game, awaiting the victor of the Denver Broncos and the Houston Texans. Game away from the Super Bowl, the Houston Texans stand in our way. Daniel Jones going up against Deshaun Watson is going to be a big time battle, but our defense is playing very, very well, pretty much shutting out the Cincinnati Bengals, but it's looking like we're struggling a little bit more here against the Houston Texans and DeAndre Hopkins. So come on. Why are we settling for field goals? Our offense has done absolutely nothing to this point, which is kind of disrespectful. There we go. A touchdown here. As, uh, you know, we're seven down seven. Down seven going in the second half. Make that down four. But our defense is just... You know what? I'm not even putting this on our defense. Our defense is doing pretty well. Our offense has just had five field goal attempts here in the first half, which is completely unacceptable. And, uh, well, expected. I think you could say. We close it in with 10. Too little, too late for this team, man. Come on. Oh, yeah. Let's just start playing good in the fourth quarter. You're never going to win games like that. That is just kind of annoying. Wasn't a whole lot of cheese to be had in that game, I don't think. It's just, you know, we're just still a year away, I think, from being the top dog, the dominant force in the AFC. But it's still a great game from Daniel Jones. 400-plus yards, three touchdowns on the game. But look at that. 12 carries for 12 yards for Melvin Gordon. Unacceptable. Starting the offseason, we're looking. Um, Casey Hayward is regressing pretty bad. I don't know if we're going to get out of his contract yet or not, but the fact that Sidney Jones was still here, 86, he's 25, no bids on him. I, I felt like it was worth the offer there just to solidify uh, our secondary. And then we just got Josh Jones for deaths behind Phillips. So it's you know nothing too crazy, but it's, it's nice signings. We had a whole bunch of salary cap still, so obviously having Daniel Jones' rookie deal is going to help us build this team and really take them over the edge to become that premier team in the AFC. And after a very productive free agency period, we just came back <laughs> and dominated the draft. Uh, in the first round, we got a two-headed running back attack now. We got Jamal Barber, 80 quick dev running back from Oklahoma. A little bit more of a power back to complement what we have in Melvin Gordon. Uh, we got Stanley Sims, defensive tackle from Meriden, 77 normal. We got an all right tackle, all right QB. Fourth round, 77 wide receiver from BYU. OB's, uh, who cares? He's fast as shit. He's M.H. Mullins. Uh, 74 line. Look at all that, man. This is 70s. Dancing. Dancing for you. Add that to Sidney Jones. Add that to uh, the, the safety that we brought in. Real good offseason. Year four, our team is scary. 90 overall, 93 offense, 93 defense. And we haven't gone crazy for agency. This has been what we've built, which is always the best type of rebuilds. Offensive line is elite. No one below B. Hunter Henry's 93. Mike Williams, 94. Keenan Allen, 95. Uh, we got Melvin Gordon. We got our new running back in there to hopefully help. Uh, you know what? I, I feel like we can get 1,000 yards for Melvin Gordon and like double-digit touchdowns for Barber or something crazy like that. Daniel Jones, 86 star. Not living, I don't think, any bit in Phillip Rivers' shadow. Uh, defensively, we got Derwin James, who's just a freak of nature. Our linebacking core is looking really nice. Denzel Perryman, we got Defensive Player of the Year, up to a star dev, which is huge. Uh, Des King, we brought in Sidney Jones in free agency. Jalen Jelks taking over for Melvin Ingram, 81 star. Got big shoes to fill, even though Ingram hasn't really done a whole lot for us in this rebuild. I don't think he had more than like six or seven sacks, so we're going to need him to step up. Uh, new look at D-Tackle. We got Zach Allen starting. We got Sims, who was our second-round pick, uh, starting there. So it's going to be interesting to see how those guys cope. But uh, I firmly expect another AFC West title and a playoff run. But it is year four, and year four in these five-year rebuilds are the most unpredictable, I think. And they're garbage for the most part. All right, roughly around the midway point, four and two. That's, that's you know, that's all right. That's where what I expect to be tied for the AFC West lead with the Denver Broncos that we have here in this very big Week Eight matchup. Look at it, contracts again. We haven't been spending a lot in free agency because we know we got a lot of in-house signings. So Denzel Perryman off the bat, yes sir. We still got seventy-one million dollars in cap. So, you know, this is an, a phenomenal situation to be in for the Chargers. Look, we're gonna be able to resign. Probably all of these. Okay, Phillips is a little bit interesting because you know he's going to take that regression and a three-year deal is a little too much. But uh, Casey Hayward, don't need you because you brought in Sidney Jones so we can lock in Trevor Williams. Derwin James is maybe the best player in football right now. So we got him locked in. So that pretty much comes down to Phillips, 85, 84, 83. You know, you look at someone like Josh Jones, maybe. We have the money. We'll, we'll bite it. We'll, we'll, we'll see what happens with Adrian Phillips. We'll give him the offer. He takes it because he's goddamn loyal. I'm liking it. Good signings. And we still have a whole bunch of money 
So if we need to spend in that Super Bowl or bust scenario going in year five, we have the capital to do so. And at the end of year number four, we didn't suffer that fourth year just disgusting as we are clearly the best team in the AFC West with an 11-5 and record. Look at that. Oh my god, he's a monster. Daniel Jones, 4,200 yards, 45 touchdowns to 13 picks. I'm actually a little bit annoyed that he got sacked 31 times given you know how good our offensive line is and how much we've kind of invested. But 45, that might be the, the best season we've seen statistically from any of our rebuild QBs. And it's coming from a guy, Daniel Jones, that right now for this upcoming draft, I mean, he is a popular name to talk about, but he's probably one of those guys that are like, is he really a first-round quarterback, or is that more so how weak the draft is? He's a monster in the sim, I'll tell you that. Uh, Melvin Gordon, nice year, 1,100 yards, five touchdowns, maybe drafting Barber in the first round, little fire in his ass to do a little bit better. Keenan Allen, big year, 94 catches, 1,200 yards, 8 TD, 709 from Mike Williams, 707 from Hunter Henry, 1,015 from Tyrell Williams, okay. Defensively, Denzel Perryman, big year, 115 tackles, 12 TFLs, 4.5 sacks, 12.5 sacks from Chenna Wosu, 12 sacks Joey Bosa, 6 from Zach Allen. And where is, where is what he, Jalen Jelk started, apparently he started this year, I guess we're running a lot of dime package or something. 6 picks for Des King, I love seeing that. Looking at the yearly awards, MVP went to, oh come on man! Okay, Daniel Jones came third, how many touchdowns? We had 45 touchdowns. What did Baker Mayfield do to beat that? He had 41 touchdowns. 40 In what world does 41 touchdowns beat 45 touchdowns? You know what I'm saying? We had more interceptions, but who finished? Who? Oh, oh, oh they went 15-1. Okay, well there you go. Yeah, you got you get your you know, you know there you go. Ah, <sighs> they're really good. We're probably gonna run into the Browns, aren't we? Well, we're taking on the Bengals yet again in a rematch from last year's playoff victory where we shut them out. So we're going to be looking for revenge. They're 8-7-1, so that's even more terrifying than their 9-7 and record that they had last year. But our team, 93 overall, 97 offense, 95 defense. We're feeling good. We're feeling froggy. We're going to spring on them. Let's go. All right, rematch from last year's game. They know they're going to come out, try to be pretty upset, but maybe we just have their number. Who knows? When we jump out to a 7-0 lead, Bengals get their field goal. Hopefully that's all they're going to get this game. As we are able to convert in the red zone for a touchdown. But there's the Bengals getting a touchdown there. Andy Dalton trying to do his thing. That is three touchdowns in the first half. Looking here for the Chargers. We will take that. Our defense is still playing pretty well. like to see it, man. There we go. 28-10. That should be enough to get us over the hump. Man, Daniel Jones is an absolute gunslinger. 45 touchdowns. Feeling kind of slighted that he didn't win the MVP award. So we're going to try to drop a 50 bomb. In this game, come on. Foot on their throats. Let's get that 50 bomb. The fans want it. 50 bomb. There we go. 52 points. I feel like we almost let, we let up there, too. We let up there at the end. Daniel Jones, six touchdowns in this victory. Even Melvin Gordon, 109 yards. Who, who caught those touchdowns? Who caught them TDs? Who caught them tutties? We got three TDs. Keenan Allen, two for Tyrell Williams. And one for Mike Williams. All right. All right. Hey, we might have a matchup. If the Browns win, we get to see who the, the rightful MVP is. That's going to be an exciting game. All right, here we go. First and second place, well, rightfully, in the MVP race. We have the 15-1 Browns against the Sim God Chargers. This is an exciting game. I was almost it was, I was almost hoping this was year five, so I could actually you know play this game with a clear conscience here. But we are the first team to settle for a field goal, and Baker Mayfield ain't settling for field goals today. He was able to be clinical there. And he pushed them into the end zone. But don't matter. We got that three-point lead. That field goal is what separates us. There we go, Chargers. Play some good defense. Shut down Baker Mayfield. And let's, let's get into the goddamn Super Bowl. There we go. Ten-point lead into the fourth quarter. They get a quick touchdown. Oh, no. And we choked it. But we did it. They had 30 seconds. There we go. We get a touchdown late in the fourth. We didn't get cheesed out of a victory. And just like that, Daniel Jones, in my opinion, the rightful MVP, Melvin Gordon with a huge game, 56 yards after last year's championship stinker, which he had, what, 12 carries, 12 yards. Daniel Jones and the LA Chargers are going to the Super Bowl to take on, oh, if you watch my review about the, my new review about Mad 19, I said the worst thing about my XP sliders is that it makes teams like the Rams and the Cowboys super overpowered. Huh, look who we get to play at the bottom of the ticker there in the Super Bowl. But don't matter. Daniel Jones is on fire, and we just knocked off the 15-1 team 
we got all the momentum. All right, we made the Super Bowl. We're taking on the 12 and 4 Cowboys in their own stadium. There is not a chance in hell I'm not not playing this game. All right, big decision. We're already down seven. Dallas scored on their first drive. It's fourth and three. We're on their side of the Ford. We're going for it, man. We're playing them in their home stadium. Look at that wide open. Melvin. Ah! Oh, what a bu Ah! Oh, let's go, Tyrell Williams. Let's go. You got speed, Boone. Oh, come on. Well, that's still a big gainer. We'll take it. Oh, right there. Throw on the run. Hunter Henry finally makes up for just not playing good. Uh, make sure we can chew the clock out here, though, because we get the ball to open up the next half. We don't want Dallas getting one of those, uh, you know, 10 second. Oh, it took us zero timeouts to go all the way down the field for a touchdown drive. So even right now, if we score, it might be a little quick, but we need points. We need a touchdown right there wide open. Mr. Mike Williams. Oh, come on. Oh. Beyond the line of scrimmage, we don't get the sick one-handed touchdown from Mike Williams. That was me. That was on me. Oh, let's go, Tyrell Williams. Let's go! Oh, we scored too quick. Oh, that might have won the Super Bowl, but we scored too quick. Oh, I'm not. That's I'm not. There's zero confidence right now. Oh, we did it. We stopped them. We did it. We beat Dallas in their own stadium. For their Super Bowl. Oh, that's oh, that's great. Oh, the clapper's gone. They got McDermott there trying to do the best for Dak. He can't do uh, the miracles that he did with the Toronto Huskies. And in year four, you know, usually we, you know, we don't play till year five, but there's no way I'm not playing Dallas and the Dallas, whatever they call it, Jerry World for the Super Bowl. We got the victory. I think that well puts us back in the win column above 500 for rebuilds here in bad 19 and we still got one more year to go this team is going to be only better next season though we know how the madden sim tends to be when you're you know no matter what you think about your teams like you know we're going to be 99 99 probably next year we're going to be better than what we are this year in the super bowl and you think like at minimum we're probably going to win the west again make a make a decent attempt at a playoff run. And then that's when the Madden Sim just comes in, sprinkles some bullshit, and says, oh, 8-8. Eight eight. There you go, bud. 8-8. Eight eight. Or maybe not even 8-8. Eight eight. We'll give you 8-7 in a tie. Or something stupid like that. But there you go. That Tyrell Williams touchdown. Putting Jalen Smith in coverage against a 6-4, 90-speed wide receiver. As Daniel Jones just did what Phillip Rivers could not win the Super Bowl and wins the MVP. Maybe some people scrutinize that when you're watching the replay. Like, oh, why'd you waste a pick on Daniel Jones? Here's why. Here's why. Because I had visions. You know, I took peyote. I went out in the deserts of San Diego, wherever the hell they are now, and uh, saw, I saw, you know, it came to me that Anthony Lynn is the man to lead this team to a Super Bowl, and we needed to draft Daniel Jones. And there you go, right there. Is it worth it, Charger fans? As he hoisted it up. We still got one more year to go, though, baby. Let's make this Chargers team into a dynasty. We got one more year. Year five, we got a lot of money to spend in free agency. Let's get it. All right, so looking at free agency, just going big in positions that we could upgrade on. We got Derek Noddy at D-tackle, Micah Hyde at free safety, and then we're completely overhauling our special teams with Chris Jones and Legatron. Stop off a pretty fall is free agency. I simmed the draft because it looked terrible. Uh, we got a 70 free safety in the first round, 70 normal, 72 normal corner, 73 outside linebacker. Uh, yeah, I, I kind of wish it was a better draft because I always like drafting my, you know, even in year four and a five, the draft that means absolutely nothing. I still like to, you know, put on a good show, but it looked terrible, man. Everyone was scouted that was red. So, uh, you know, get all right getting three seventies and, uh, we'll just, we'll just, you know, take our Super Bowl and be happy with it. Year five, we got that 97 overall team, 99 offense, 99 defense. And look at that, man. You see one free agency signing, not on the offensive line. I don't think we have one free agency signing on our team. We got Melvin Gordon, drafted, drafted. This might be the best offense that we've built. I mean, look, we got Isaiah Prince, Bydash, the center's up to a 95, Lemieux 86. Okay, scary team. And obviously the great Daniel Jones, one of the best quarterbacks in football right about now. Defense aside, Bosa got that 99. Derwin James got that 99. Chenna Wosu's probably going to be 90 plus. Same with uh, Jatavis Brown. We brought in Micah Hyde as a free agent. Des King might have an outside shot at getting those gold gloves at 99. 
Brought in Derek Nadi at Nadi 3. So, I mean, look, even on our defense, we pretty much drafted everyone on offense. And on defense, outside of Nadi and Micah Hyde, and we got Sidney Jones playing nickel, this is, again, just, just we built this team from the ground up. So, this is definitely one of the best rebuilds we've done. But now it's time to defend our Super Bowl championship. And it's always hard to do it. Trust me, as an Eagle fan, I saw it firsthand this year. But all I guess we could say is give me the opportunity, Madden Sim. Just don't have me go, like, seven wins or something garbage like that. Right, this is the first we're at season's end and we're getting rid of that confidence boost because we have another 99 overall player and it comes via Tyler Abidaz, the just just phenomenal phenomenal center from I think we can all probably say that uh, you know everyone wants to say their their school is the X oh he doesn't wear gloves so we're, we're just gonna give him the gold the gold cleats offensive line you in Wisconsin so that 99 overall center is monstrous look we got daniel jones gonna be up to a 96 we'll just auto spend these as your chargers 13 and 3 getting that first round by let's find out who we play before we look at the stats to defend our championship we got that nine and seven ravens team get lamar jackson i assume pretty sneaky and daniel jones almost with a confidence boost is that 100 overall so i think this might be literally not only my favorite rebuild because of all the players that we like we built ourselves to make them good but just from a my god from from like an overall standpoint this might be the best overall team that we've ever had but i mean you know i'm not gonna pat myself on the back too hard it's not like we took over a hard roster chargers have a very good roster so daniel jones 4300 yards 40 touchdowns to seven picks another phenomenal year from him 1100 yards eight tds from melvin gordon we get eight touchdowns from barber our receiving front mike williams has been simply incredible in this rebuild 83 catches 1100 yards 10 tds over almost 1109 for tyrell keaton allen's been a little bit disappointing but we do know in rebuilds for whatever reason in the sim like the big name wide receivers rarely do good for whatever reason defensively Perryman led the team 87 tackles we got 12 sacks zach allen who's you know quietly been a monster for us as well 11 sacks chenowosu 11 from Joey Bosa, and we got, you know, decent amount of turnovers in the secondary. Yearly awards, MVP went to Todd Gurley. Don't know what Daniel Jones has to do to get an MVP nod, but whatever, man. He got that Super Bowl MVP. Offensive Player of the Year went to Daniel Jones. We got Defensive Player of the Year went to Miles Garrett with Denzel Perryman at 6. Chenowosu at number 9. So, all things considered, we have at least have an opportunity to defend the crown. And let's get into this game against what we assume is Lamar Jackson and the 9 and 7 Baltimore Ravens. All right, let's go. Come on. We can't we can't get bounced in the first round by a team that didn't even get double digit wins, you know? Even though the Madden Sib says that that's impossible. Let's go. Baltimore's always got to have a pretty good defense as we're trading field goals here. This is actually the matchup that happened this year in the playoffs, oddly enough. And this was pretty boring. But why is our 99 overall offense not doing anything? More at, later at 6 o'clock, we'll find out why. So we're down six, entering the second half. We're not playing particularly well, but you know neither are the Ravens for how many opportunities they've had that we've been holding them to field goals, which is nice. Get that touchdown here. Get a three-point lead in the fourth quarter, holding them to a turnover, it looked like, but we punted it. Not looking great. Neither team's offense is playing well, and the Ravens, of course, have the ball, and they're able to get a field goal with Justin Tucker. Here, let's come on. We're the best field goal kicker on YouTube. All right, here it is to not go to all. Oh, we shanked it because we suck. Game's going overtime. Calling it. Ravens got the ball first. Come on, defense. Big stand, defense. Okay, we got the stand. We get a score. It's over. First team to score wins, and it looks like it's going to be us. What? In what scenario do you miss a 20-yard kick? We paid Greg Zerline, like, top money to come in, and he just shanks. Oh, that's a perfect way to end the rebuild. Miss a 30-yard field goal in overtime. <laughs> well, at least we have the Super Bowl. If we didn't get the Super Bowl, I'd be livid at this point. But, I mean, you know, here you go. This is this is Madden's way of saying you built a 99 overall team pretty much. Well, here's a way to reward your team building skills by bullshit like this. Um, well, we already got the Super Bowl. We already got the Super Bowl. This was a successful rebuild. Daniel Jones was an absolute phenom at the quarterback spot. So, all in all, I'll take it. So uh, we are going to be doing an NFC team next. We still have the Packers, the Vikings, the Rams, and the Cardinals remaining in the NFC. So let me know out of those teams. I kind of want to save the Cardinals for a little bit later because it's going to be a more difficult rebuild. 
So I would say right now, guys, between the Rams, Vikings, and Packers, let me know what team you want to see on next week's ends rebuild in the comment section below. As always, if it's your first time stopping by, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button, smash the like button if you enjoyed. And until next time, it's C4 saying peace out. Money I'm spending, I'm out and I'm shopping. You talking that shit, well, you talking and talking. Look at my options, look at me dropping. Ass in the game, like, who are you stopping? Not me, not me, not never. Not me, not me, not never. Not me, not me, not never. I'm way too clever. Look at the kid, Mr. Consent.